This is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at a game I'm really excited about, Dawn of the Zeds 3rd Edition. No disclaimer needed for this one, I worked out a trade with one of our Slack members and playtesters, Nick, so thanks for sending this buddy, and uh, he sent me a copy, and I'm going to send him something down the line. Dawn of the Zeds is a pretty epic zombie defense game, and I, for one, love zombies, movies, video games, can't get enough. And the game starts by teaching you the basic game, and then you can level up through up to five levels of complexity. What I'm going to show you is level two today, which is two levels up from basic, so kind of like three out of six. It keeps most of what I would consider the core elements of the game, but cuts out the research track, the tunnel, which is on the other side of the board, just some of the more complicated things. So will we survive? Let's find out. You have a book dedicated just to setup and epilogues when you win or lose the game. They've got basic setup, and they've got a dialogue for each level you'll play at. This is level two. Now, this might seem a little bit complicated. I'll try to walk you through things in a clear way, but definitely if you get the game, you want to start at the basic level and build your way up to make it easier for you. So I've already randomized on all of the village spaces one refugee. They start out defiant, which means they don't want to leave their homes. They don't believe in these zombies. And one regular civilian unit. The refugees are in level two, but aren't in the basic in level one, but they aren't too much to deal with. I also put out some of the core trackers, how many event actions you get on a turn, how many supplies you have for feeding your people, how much ammo you have for shooting zombies, and how bad the infection is with more zombies coming out. Actions and infections start at zero, but you roll for supplies and ammo. Two dice. Six, so the total of that is how many supplies I got. And my starting ammo level is equal to six minus my lower die. So in this case, the most you can start with, five. Now you've got two main decks to put together. The first one is the Fate deck. And you'll see for all the components in the game, they helpfully indicate what level they're used for. So I'm in the blue and the green cards right now. Next, you're going to randomly figure out your heroes. And basically, each player will select any character they want out of those available. And the others are randomized to bring it up to four. And you're allowed to do it before or after, so I'm going to pick my three random ones and then uh, get my hero last. Well, let's see what I got here. Nice little mix. I got Pickles the dog, super fast, scavengers, and can sneak by zombies. Sheriff Hunt, basically the Rick Grimes of this game, very strong and can command other uh, civilians around. Then finally, Mr. Johnson, another really good scavenger. He brings some extra supplies and ammo to me. Very nice. He gets stuff better when he's foraging. He can heal in the field, he shoots really heavy, he's got traps for zombies, he's the jack of all trade. So now I gotta pick my final person to kind of fill out the team. I do have some of the small expansions in play here, so not all these characters in the base game, although most of them are. To show you some of my options, I could go with a crazy hand-to-hand -hand fighter, a sniper, a luchador, the mayor of town, uh, Rusty, basically Daryl from The Walking Dead, marksman and trainer May Hauser, uh, the deputy, a horse for people to ride, or a colonel. But yeah, I think the decision was already made when we saw a luchador. So he's kind of slow, but he can charge zombies out of the way. He's really hard to kill, but he's really bad at shooting. I additionally pick one random heroic civilian. And here I've got a riot squad. Ooh, it's harder for them to get bitten by zombies. Better at restoring order in town. Very nice. Now each of these cards has like a little bio in the back and also tells you which pieces you'll need because some of the heroes, looks like it might just be the sheriff, they kind of tell you like what they come into play with, and he's got a special token that gives him extra actions. And I put all of my heroes plus my heroic civilians in the town center. Let's not forget that Mr. Johnson brought some food and ammo with him, so we are thankful for him. All right, the final big step is building the event deck. We'll show you a short solo game so we can get through the whole thing pretty easily. So I'm going to have two one-star cards, seven two-star, six three-star, and four four-star. And you'll see we'll have a mix of these exclamation point ones that are terrible and some regular events. And we'll put one end card at the very bottom. And then additionally at level two and above, we're going to put the National Guard card 10 from the bottom. So basically they'll be coming near the end of the game to help us. Finally, to finish up, you create little containers of regular zombies and super zombies. And you're going to draw one for the start space of each of our four tracks. And finally, you create a pool of 10 chaos tokens. If these run out and you got to place another one, you lose the game. And you take one player action marker per player in the game. So here it is one. And with that, you're good to go. Let's look at how to play. So the key idea of each turn, and it's pretty simple, is you draw the top event card. You resolve the effects from left to right, each of the phases. And really, the only one you do major stuff is in the action phase here at the end. One of the phases will have a special event, and the text will describe what happens during that special event and when it happens. 
And then you move on to the next event card and you try to survive. If you can keep zombies from entering the town center or keep chaos from running out and run out the event card before either of those things happens, you win. So let's go through each of these phases briefly and talk about the basics. So in the 4R phase, a bunch of people that might be on the board and might not will move. Often this phase is very quick because they won't be there. You could have rangers that are helping you out move for free. You could have raiders, humans who are trying to take advantage of you instead of fighting the zombies. Once the National Guard shows up, they're a very strong unit that'll move and help you out. And then finally, you have a number from zero to two. And that's how many refugees you can move toward the town center in safety. They start out defiant, which means they won't move at all. Same thing with the civilians in each of the towns. But once they survive or don't survive their first zombie attack, all their defiance goes away. The civilians can be used and attack freely. And the refugees start fleeing toward town center. And these are basically free actions you can use to move them towards there. If they make it to town, they go into the refugee camp. Uh, it's good for your final score to save them, but it also makes it more likely you have to eat more food. Next is the infection step. Uh, sometimes it'll say the infection level goes up or down automatically. And that's just this little track right here. And this will be going up frequently. Every time one of your units has hand-to-hand -hand combat with zombies, it goes up one. Every time you fix chaos in a space, it goes up one. Every time a unit gets almost killed and gets sent to the hospital, it goes up one. And if it ever goes all the way to 13, you have an uncontrolled outbreak and you spawn a super zombie. But what's more likely to happen is what's indicated here. You roll two dice. And if the number you roll is equal to or less than the current level, you decrease the level by that much. So let's say I rolled a seven, it would go from nine to two. And then you have to spawn a zombie. Eating's really simple. It'll be one or two supplies. If you can't eat that many because you run out of supplies, you have to hurt your units that much, whatever's left over. And then you roll a d6, and if it's equal to or less than the number of refugees added to the number of people convalescing in the hospital, you have to eat one food. But again, that's only if there's a die here, not a number. And then you get the two most important phases. The rest are really quick. First is zombie activation, Zeds. For each track in the indicated order, and again, there are four tracks on this side of the map, you move each zombie there one space toward town center. If they come into contact with some units, you have hand-to-hand -hand combat, and again, the infection level goes up one. And if a track is activated when there are no zombies in play on that track, instead you spawn one zombie at the start space. A lot of event cards have these little Z symbols on them. That's a balancing mechanic for when you're playing with two to four players, so we're going to ignore that for solo. And finally, we get to the player actions. Here we have three. That's how many event actions you have that you can spend on anybody. You also have your player action for each player they can spend it once per turn to move again any unit. So there is no ownership here. You're basically all working with the same group. And then some characters can have bonus actions. For example, Sheriff Hunt can order a civilian on or adjacent to his space. And what are the basic actions? You can move. Generally speaking, regular civilians move two, refugees move one, heroes move four, and heroic civilians like my uh, little force over there move three. If you move into a zombie space, you have to stop and fight. Speaking of fighting, if a unit is adjacent to a zombie, they can attack in range combat, but it uses one ammo up. That's one action. Next basic action is to forage, but only if you're at a named location. So that's any of the town locations and any of the places that has a little green sign here, depending on where you are, you might get different stuff. But usually you just roll a die and you're looking for a four, five, or six. If you have a scavenger like Mr. Johnson or Pickles, the dog, you roll two dice and pick the better result. If someone's hurt in a hospital bed, one action will heal them one and also lower infection by one point, but you can only do that once per character per turn. And finally, not really an action, but as zombies take over spaces that have a name, they'll leave these little chaos tokens there. And again, if we have to place one and we run out, we lose the game. And characters can't move past these or do any actions while they're in them, like shooting out of them. But if you have a good unit of civilians or a hero in the space at the end of a round, you take it away, although you increase infection by one. Finally, to explain combat, whenever you attack or defend against a zombie, you pick one player unit to defend, so they can't combine their values. But zombies do combine their values into a mob, so for example, this would be 10 strength, not 6 or 4. And you calculate the current modifier for strength. So here the zombies are at least 3 times the player unit. And you'll see there's different charts here. We've got 3 times, at least 2 times, more than, equal to, humans more than, humans 2 times, humans 3 times, pretty simple. A lot of the locations and also powers, like a lot of defensive emplacements, like uh, towns and things, will have defensive terrain modifiers. And those basically move the column you're using over by one or more. So like here, instead of being zombies times three, it would be zombies times two. You roll two dice, cross-reference. Number on the left is how many hits the zombies take. And you can see zombies will generally take two hits, and on the third hit they'll flip to a weaker side, and then three more hits will kill them. Civilians take two hits to flip, two hits to kill. Here is usually only take two hits to kill entirely. The first hit will flip them. And the side that is highlighted is one that retreats away from the space. So white is the heroes retreating, red is the zombies retreating. 
Oh, and a final note, you can only have two zombies per space. That's the stacking limit and two player units per space, although refugees don't count against that limit. And that's about it. Let's see if we can survive. So we're gonna draw our first card, rule number seven, cardio. Clearly some zombie land lovers making this game. Okay, so for R, we have one refugee movement, but all of them are defined, so we can't use it yet. And none of the other units are on the board. Infection is a double roll, but we're at zero, so no chance and no point. We do have to eat one supply, taking us to seven. Now we get a double activation of the suburbs track. Now the event effect does happen before we double activate the suburbs. Place one new Zed unit on an empty start space. There aren't any, if possible. Otherwise, place it on the start space with the lowest strength Zed's unit. So we've got two sixes, an eight, and a four, so they're going over here on the forest. And it is a two, happy for a weaker one. Then this card says, if and when a Zed's unit enters a space occupied by any civilians or hero unit this turn, you may freely retreat that unit instead of engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Nice. Right, so double activation. The first one, all zombies move and you go from inner to outer, but there's only one Zed right now. Second activation. All right, so the zombie comes in. The civilian immediately loses its defiant status, and now I can actually move it around. And now normally we would have a hand-to-hand -hand combat that would increase infection by one. With the one terrain shift, we would go from the zombies leading by two times to just advantage zombies. This is, I get a free retreat, and this is still a good defensive place. We're definitely going to run to Farmingdale University. And if refugees are in a space with a zombie the first time, they switch to their fleeing side and get to move for free. But if they're ever alone in a space with a zombie again, like if this guy came in again and they retreated, they are killed. And the infection rate goes up by two. So don't let that happen. When I'm saying killed a lot, but generally speaking, every unit gets a saving throw. You roll a d6, four, five, six, they go to the hospital on their hurt side and they get a little EKG marker and it'll take a while to heal them. Uh, one, two, three, they are completely dead. They go to the cemetery. All right, so after that nastiness, we're going to get one event action plus our player action, any special actions we can take. And you can mark that here just to help you out. And just to kind of review my heroes in more detail, El Toro Loco only moves three, but when he charges into combat, he's a chance to just hurt the zombies without increasing infection at all and push them back. And he's really hard to kill. Mr. Johnson has a plus two bonus to his gunfire attack, so he actually attacks like he's a five strength, which is pretty awesome. He also scavenges better. He can heal people in the field. Usually you need to heal in the hospital. And he's got a chance to trap zombies when they enter his space. Basically, he retreats for free and does some damage to them. Pickles can scavenge. He has a really good chance of moving into a zombie space without getting attacked by them. Although on a one, he could be killed. And when he's in a space with zombies, when they try to move out, he can bark. And on a four, five, six, they don't move away from him. So he can move into their space and mess with them. And finally, Sheriff Hunt, like I said, gives a civilian unit a free action each turn. He can shoot two spaces away instead of one. He's hard to kill. He gets to reroll his attacks. He's a nasty guy. And of course my riot squad, they can't shoot, but they don't increase the infection level when they do hand to hand. They can decrease order without increasing infection. The law enforcement is only for the versus mode, which of course we're gonna ignore. And just by random chance, I got the strongest regular civilians unit in the game out in town center with me. So I'm probably gonna use them too. So at the moment, my best fighter to deal with a six strength zombie unit is El Toro Loco. He's the only one who ties them. And he moves three. So for one action, my event action, he can get there. And then for my player action, he can get two here to protect these uh, refugees. And again, they don't count against the stacking limit of two, so we can freely exist here together. And that's all my actions. But Sheriff Hunt can use his leadership to activate either the riot squad or my regular civilians. And that could be activating them to move, to shoot guns, to forage. But let's see, my strongest zombies are over here, and that's also where some of my weakest civilians are. So let's maybe order my heroic civilians over there. They only move three. And that's one round of the game. Let's go to the next event card. Panic is self-preservation. Oh, so we get two free refugee moves. That's nice. Now, each refugee can only move once per turn. So our one fleeing refugee will be the only one that moves, even though it said two. We again don't need to worry about infection, but do need to eat one. Gets us a six overall. And oh, yikes. Every Zed's track activates. Eight's coming out on the highway. The six is coming out on the mountain. I could choose the order to resolve this, by the way. The horde of zombies is coming here. At least they're kind of far away in the forest. And then, of course, our most important ones come in here. I'm going to have El Toro Loco defend. It's six to six, which would normally be a tie. But because they're at the university, he's going to get the advantage. We do gain one infection for hand-to-hand -hand combat. And higher number is always better. Yes, a ten. Checking our chart. Ten on hero advantage. Three damage to the zombies, zero to the heroes. All right. Remember, three damage is enough to flip them, so they're at four strength. And they have to retreat back to where they came from. We get two event actions this turn, but we got a special power. So remember, that's only for multiplayer games, so we're not going to use that. During this phase, all move actions towards town center by units adjacent to Zeds are free. That would be amazing if more of our civilians were defined, but that's only going to apply to El Toro Loco and our three civilians here. We get two actions plus our player action and Sheriff Hunt ordering some civilians. 
And let's see, I will have the regular civilians move too. That seems to make sense since it's free. El Toro Loco could also move. And yeah, you know, I think he will. I wanna get people to not be defiant if possible. So he'll come here to this uh, crowded little town and help to protect these guys when the zombies come. All right, but I still have my three actual actions, two event and one player plus Hunt's leadership. I think for one, I'll move my defenders three to help against this crazy strong Zed here. I think the sheriff will use his leadership to move out our super civilians there. For my second event action, I'll move the sheriff out. And then sure, I'll use my player action to get him right in the thick of things. If they don't move, he can blast them with a nice uh, range attack. All right, time for our next event. Oh, we're into the two stars already. Gosh, the shorts game ramps up really quickly. Okay, we get zero free refugee moves. Uh, we roll two dice for infection, but we're at one, so it's still not possible. We roll one die to see if we need to eat one, but we're comparing it to the number of people in hospital beds and the refugee camp, which is zero. So again, no need to roll. Okay, and the zombies are going to attack the mountain, but it's not as simple as that. So first, at the beginning of the phase, plus one infection per Zed's unit on the mountain track. Luckily, there's only one, so infection will go to two. Then we place a new Zed's unit on the mountain track and use another six. And then finally, we activate them one because that doesn't apply in a solo game. But we'll get no terrain shift this phase, so the fight will be a lot tougher. And, you know, I realized I did forget the zombies took over a named spot, so we've got our first chaos on the board right there. All right, so this guy will move in first, and then that guy will move up in a second. The defiance is gone, at least for the civilians. And man, I really don't want to lose him, but those civilians have no chance by themselves, so the sheriff will fight with a disadvantage. He's got martial arts, so he can reroll his attack. Ooh, but a 10 is good for me. But remember, the zombies had advantage, so it's not as pretty as last time. They'll take two hits and retreat, but he'll take one hit. Two hits is not enough to flip them to their weakened side, so they'll sit like that. And they are going back where they came from. And the sheriff would take one hit that would just straight up flip him to his wounded side, but he's got tough, so if he gets a four, five, or six, he doesn't take any damage at all. Come on, sheriff, you got this. Yes! Oh, and I forgot one infection from the zombies attacking. And the other zombie does move up, so they are a mob of 12 now if they get to attack us. But hey, all I know is that we lived. Well, we do only get one action plus our regular ones. Clearly some of those are gonna be Sheriff Hunt shooting people. So when you apply hits to a mob of zombies, you can split them however you want. I wanna get at least one hit to flip those guys. So it's one action to shoot and I'm gonna use one ammo. And unlike hand-to-hand -hand combat, you just find the unit's power, roll two dice and see how many hits he cause. Right, come on, Sheriff, go big. Oh, nice, I'm rolling great, nine. So a nine with five, yeah, three hits. And let's see, I can look. The guys that are already wounded have a three on the other side. They have a four. And usually it's better to completely eliminate zombies. So I'll flip them and have two more damage on them. So one more will kill them. And shoot, I've got the ammo for it. So let's use my other action and shoot again. All right, come on, Sheriff, do it. Eight. Oh, three again. Wow. So I finish these guys off and do two to the next group of zombies. They are hurting. It's basically all Sheriff hour today. He's going to use his free action to move those civilians. Although actually, I guess we're doing okay. Maybe they should forage instead. So foraging again depends on where you are. They're just in a basic village, which is another named space. So a four or five will be a supply, a six will be a bullet. Anything else is nothing. So search for me. Oh my gosh. Yeah, these dice are on fire, people. We got one of the ammo back that we spent. So we did a lot of damage with almost no cost. Awesome. All right, more attacks coming. Oh man, we got one of our exclamation points. These ones are terrible. Because first we are getting two free refugee moves. But note that this space was never taken over by the zombies. So actually the refugees didn't flip yet. So again, the only ones that move and we have to choose to move them are those fleeing ones. No infections, I don't mind that. We have to roll for eating, but again, no one's there yet. But all the tracks move again. And at the beginning of this phase, place a new Zed unit on the start space of every track, applying the stacking limit if necessary. And then remove all hit markers from Zed's units, they heal. So our damage guys are fully powered again. Gosh, a new zombie on every track. Okay, for the mountains, a five. For the forest, a five. For the suburbs, a five. For the highway, a four. Things are looking crowded now. Let's we'll start with the forest since they're furthest away. We'll go there and there. Suburbs will go there and there. And they do put some chaos at the university, unfortunately. We got some combat happening on this side of the board. Let's try the sheriff out first. So the six will move in, the five will be moving up. And this time we do get the terrain bonus, so the sheriff will have an even shot with them. But our infection will tick up. Come on, sheriff, take him down. Oh my god! <laughs> This game is ridiculous. You gotta imagine this is bad for them. Equal to three damage. So they might have healed, but they're flipping right back. Not sure if we'll have as much luck over here. So the defiance is removed for the civilians. And we'll have my riot squad fight them off the best they can. Remember, they don't increase infection when they fight in hand-to-hand. -hand. 
And even though eight is a lot more than five, the key thing is here, it's not double. So with the terrain bonus, they'll actually be tied. See if they can roll like the sheriff. They cannot. This might not be good. Oh my gosh. Three damage to me and zero to the zombies and we have to retreat. That is not good. Two flips to them. One, they are hurt. One more and they'll have to make a saving throw or die. They have to retreat. The civilians whiff them after retreat. And the defiant refugees flip and start fleeing. And we got chaos here too, wow. And how many actions do we get to respond to this horribleness? Only one. Oh man, I don't know what to do. This track is really not looking good. I could bring in Mr. Johnson maybe. One, two, three, four. Well, I could send Pickles in. One, two, three, four, five, six. She would have a one in six chance of having to fight that guy, probably dying. But if she gets a two through six, she would have a 50% chance of barking and preventing him from moving. But I'll take my odds, that'll be my first action. Come on, Pickles, be sneaky. Yes. So the far strike is about to get pretty nasty. I think I'll use my last action to move Mr. Johnson. One, two, three, four. He'll be at the farm ready to back them up after the uh, zombies probably advance soon. And the sheriff is still holding pretty strong, so he'll use his leadership to order some uh, food gathering again. Yep, there we go. We got one supply. Not too far off from where we started, which is good. We can't have another terrible event like that. Ah, oh, the suburbs night assault. Okay, the suburbs aren't in a terrible way. Okay, zero for refugee moves. We do have to roll this time because we're at four. So if we get a four or less, we'll decrease it that much, but we'll also have to spawn a zombie. Nice, and nothing happens. You gotta eat the supply the civilians just found. And this is similar to the last one. Plus one infection per Z unit on the suburb. And we place a new unit and we don't get terrain bonuses this turn. So we've got two Zeds there, it's up to six. Place a third. Oh my gosh, is that a nine? No. These guys are coming to get El Toro. The five's moving up, the nine's moving in. We do have to increase infection once again. But the defiance is gone. All right, so El Toro just has advantage because he's not getting the terrain bonus. Come on. Seven, okay, I'll take it. All right, so two damage to the zombies and only one to El Toro, which is good because he, unlike most heroes, takes two damage to flip. Those ones are almost dead. Maybe we can shoot them and they'll run back. Once again, the refugees are still defined. Their space didn't get taken. But finally, we get some real actions too. Now El Toro can shoot to finish those zombies off, but he's bad at it, he counts as a three. But you know, instead, if he moves in with his bull charge, if he gets a four, five, or six, there'll be no combat, no pestilence or infection increase, and he'll do one hit and kill him. And then he can resolve the order too. So it's taking a chance, but let's try it. Boom, here we go. Come on, four, five, six, luck hold out, yeah. So these guys are dead, no damage dealt. And at the end of the round, he'll clear order, but we'll increase that again. Sheriff Hunt will order some free foraging again. Ah, no luck this time. And we've got two actions left. Maybe we should make these guys run away. Oh, that's right, we got the dog there that might help. We could have Mr. Johnson move in and actually shoot the zombies. Or he could actually scavenge the farm. Uh, you need a six to get two supplies there and he has a pretty good chance rolling two dice. And then he can use supplies to heal people in the field, although he's not near anybody yet. See, so yeah, let's have him just forage for the moment. Okay, so that would be one supply. And then for my second action, let's go ahead and use uh, Sheriff Hunt while he's there. Spend one ammo down to six to shoot. Come on. Seven. And with a five, that's two damage. That's not quite enough to finish that four off. Maybe they won't move though. Highway night assault. Oh, the highway track is where the dog is. I hope you hold out. Okay, we get one free refugee move. These ones are certainly the most in danger, especially with the highway being attacked, so they'll run. We should roll for infection. I don't feel like our chances are very good here. All right, seven. Oh, four. So it counts down four to three. And now we draw a fate card to find out where the zombies appear. And you know, I forgot that El Toro actually uh, removed the chaos. We're up to four, we're at eight. So I'm gonna draw the top fate card and like this one, it'll indicate which track we're gonna use. And it'll have either a negative effect, which says play this card, or a keep effect that's a positive one for us. And the new zombie will spawn on the chaos space closest to the town center if there is one. And if not, they'll spawn on the village space closest to the town center. So for the suburbs track, we have two of them. All the rest just have one. Let's check our fate. Highway. Oh my gosh, and they're about to double activate. We are dead. Now we do get a positive here. Sturdy vehicles commandeered. We can add plus three movement points to somebody moving, except for Pickles, because he can't drive a car. But yeah, it's apparently all highway today. Only a three, that's lucky. Now you have to roll new stealth for Pickles every time a zombie enters his space. 
I would imagine it applies to zombies spawning as well. I'm not entirely sure. He's okay. We have to eat one down to six. And then yikes, plus one per zombie on the highway. That's three now. So we're up to seven again. And then a new zombie on the highway, and then they're going to charge and charge and charge. Another four. Those numbers are staying somewhat low. Okay, so they activate twice. So the first time they try to move there, Pickles will bark. A four, five, six. They stay put. Ah. So they're coming in. That is a combined strength of 11. So we're definitely going to have our boring normal civilians defend here. Because it's going to be three times either way, and we'd rather keep the better people. Five ain't going to do it. So three times with five means four hits. And I forgot to increase the infection. And four hits for a civilian is a straight up kill. Two to flip and two to remove. But they get a saving throw. Nope. So they are just dead. These guys do get to retreat. And these guys advance. And now the second activation. Here they come at the nuclear plant. And so we have to use our riot squad, but at least no infection increase. Not liking our chances. I think we're dead. Seven. Yeah, seven is three. That's more than enough. Roll to survive. Nope. Oh man, we lost our unique civilians already. And they are gonna devour these refugees for two more. No! And they aren't done. Chaos. And these guys come in. Do they see the dog? Nope. Good. Man, oh man, that is not pretty. I gotta get some more help there. All right, again, just one action. Let's say either Sheriff Hunt or Mr. Johnson are my best bet here. Let's have the Sheriff order his civilians' friends to run away. <laughs> refugees, you can uh, deal with it on your own. And it'll spend one action. One, two, three, four. Second action, one, two, three. Uh, do I want to be there? Or do I want to be here where I have the two bonus? Yeah, for now, I'll stop there. That's it. Can't do anything else. Toxic says. That doesn't sound good. One free refugee movement. Only what we can get is here. Oh, and of course, we're holding for infection again. Okay, it's a 10. Come on, come on. Oh, that's the worst roll possible. We're only decreasing it by two, but we're still getting another zombie. All right. Where the most chaos. And two guesses where the track with the most chaos is. That's right. It's another four. Hey, but we got a positive again. A man with no name. East Clintwood emerges from the shadows to assist you before disappearing once again. Play this card at the beginning of any hand-to-hand -hand combat for a one-time three-column increase. I love that. And we have to eat one and then... Oh my gosh, are you kidding? All right, so double highway. Uh, Pickles will try to bark for their first activation. No. No luck with that at all. And these last guys will move in. Do they see him? They don't. Okay, I'll have two actions. Time for some shooting. The beginning of this phase. Place a new Zed unit on the highway track. Start space. Place the toxic marker on the strongest regular unit there. Until eliminated three infection when you have a hand in hand combat with a Zed. What? So they've got a lot of these little things. And it looks like the eight is going to be toxic as well. All right. So I've got two event actions plus one player action. I think it might just be shoot, 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 shoot all day long. So first shot from the sheriff. Shooting that eight. Come on. Nine. Three hits. That is a good start. You are flipped already. Second shot with the sheriff. Let's get rid of them before they ever infect us. Six. It's going to be only two hits. And I think I have to. I'm burning through ammo. Third shot with the sheriff. My last action. Three. Wow, it's a single hit, which, hey, was enough, but I wanted to do a bit more damage there. And sadly, there's no one to be a leader of, so nothing doing there. Wow, we are not even halfway yet. Standing strongest when standing alone. Okay, so one free refugee move. We know who that'll be again. They're almost at the town center. No infection, love that. No eating, love that. Oh, highway and suburbs. We'll get two actions. Oh, I get it. So this would have made a multiplayer game harder, but for Solo, when standing alone, nothing too bad happens. So highways first, this guy's gonna attack the sheriff. And if an enemy gets into town center, you immediately lose. So I gotta win here. I've got a two shift though, which is gonna put me from advantage to the best column three times. And I've got a reroll, I shouldn't lose. Eight, I'll take it. Infection does go up to nine, but yeah, three. So they flip and I take no damage. Then these guys come in and this guy tries to leave. Can you bark for once? No, you can't. Okay, Pickles, you are useless. Suburbs is also activating, so El Toro Loco is going to fight, and this guy's coming in. We're up to 10. Oh, man, we're almost to a super zombie. 
He's going from advantage to double with the terrain bonus. Could play Clint to make it triple, but it doesn't seem worth it. Six. Uh, with two times. Okay, one damage. He's going to flip, but the Zeds take two. And they are certainly running away, but they've got a nine there. So now they're a 14 strength group. All right, I've got two event actions. I think at least one of them has to be getting him out of there. So he'll spend one. He only moves three. So I guess we'll go one, two, three. I want to go get him healed. Let's see, the sheriff could shoot, but they're not really the ones he wants to shoot. If they come attack, he'll probably kill them. It'll just be plus one infection. So maybe this is a scavenging turn. Unfortunately, Pickles only rolled one die when he's in a chaos space. And of course, Mr. Johnson is on a farm. and We need ammo more than we need food at the moment. Maybe I should move Pickles over here and try to slow down some people. Or I could just use both my actions to move El Toro Loco into bed and then heal him one that would lower infection a little bit, at least start getting us to a more controlled level. Yeah, okay, let's try it. Maybe a terrible idea. So he comes back with one damage and we go down one. Actually, wait, if we said he was driving our sturdy commandeered vehicles, we'd got him there in one action, we'd still have one action left. So uh, sure, let's move Mr. Johnson up. Then if they still don't move, he can actually shoot them and uh, forage for ammo. There's no time for that. Oh man, probably gonna be another infection. We got it down to nine with El Toro's healing. Will it be enough? Now, five is at least a somewhat decent number this time. See if our luck continues with good fate cards. Nope. Okay, the suburbs. They've got a chaos space, so they won't uh, jump forward to the village. And since the space is already full, they'll just go back one to the next space. And it's a five. How about the bridge collapse? Place the bridge collapse marker on the Farmingdale suspension bridge space. There it is. Player units and raiders, you can ignore the competitive part, cannot enter that space, but zombies still can. You may spend one action to flip that marker over to its fairy side, allowing your units to enter that space. But they must cease their movement for that move action if they do. They must conduct another move action to leave the space normally. Oh my gosh, so that's just going to slow down everything over there. Well, it's a good thing it's not my worst track. We have to eat two, that's not good. Okay, and the track with the fewest sets activates twice. I hope we can have some refugees eaten because that's definitely over here. So they'll go two, these guys get a free run away. And we're putting down some chaos. But then they'll come again, these guys are eaten for two infection and more chaos. We're up to six again, and we only got five tokens left. And we get three actions, but we flip all our player action markers, which would again be terrible in multiplayer, so we'll just have three actions this turn. And let's see, I think I am going to use one to heal El Toro Loco to bring us down to five. And anytime you heal someone, you can immediately put them into town center. And I think for his next action, he'll run up to the campground, shore up uh, this track if it advances more. You know, for my third action, I feel dumb for having sent these guys up here in the first place. I can bring these villagers back to the town center, and then the sheriff can order them into his space for free, and that'll give me a lot more defense if I have some crisis here. Oh, we're into the three stars. Unidentified mob appears. Okay, so at the beginning of this phase, make a fate draw. The infection track is currently eight or higher. Place a new Super Zed unit on the faded track start space. If it's seven or lower, it is. Place the Special Refugees VIP Survivors here instead. Nice, it's another good one. Okay, and the Mountain Tracks, so they're on the start space. Ugh. Play to eliminate any one Zed's unit as it tries to enter a town space. Whoa! And the VIP Survivors mostly act like regular refugees. Oh crud, you know what? I forgot to make a saving throw for my other refugees. Uh, so let's see, first one, oh, they did. Second one, what? See, these guys actually take up some hospital beds. I can use heal actions to put them into the refugee camp where they'll eat my food, but that'll increase infection, yikes. But as I was saying, if they reach the town center, they either let me put infection to zero, heal all my units, or get some supplies and ammo, nice. Okay, we're rolling for infection. Nice. Uh, no food eaten. But our friend the highway track is coming into play again. Okay, mountains first. Oh man, so that's definitely three times. Let's see, if I got a three bonus, I'll go all the way to equal to, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, if I win, I can straight up kill that four. And by the way, of course, infection goes up. So I'm gonna use this. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, so 11 would have been me taking two hits and them taking one and me retreating. But now it's them taking three hits and me taking one. So the one zombie is killed. I put two damage on the five. He retreats back and I take one damage on my civilian. Oh, you know, before I get to my highway activation, I forgot my two refugee moves. So I have to move the VIPs, although they won't move into a zombie space. And these ones move into town center. That raises my infection to seven. And now I got to feed them. 
I can, by the way, once per turn for free equip run refugee. I take them out. I take a dead civilian and put them on their wounded side and they come into town center. Now it's better for your score to have more refugees alive, but of course that would mean fewer people to feed and I would also have more people to fight potentially. All right, now let's get to the highway. These guys are charging forward first and I guess I'll have the sheriff defend, although I really don't want him to die. So uh, easily has three times. And eight, we'll keep it. Infection is up to eight, but eight with the three times will completely kill them off and we're fine. Or I should say we're mostly fine. We got a few more zombies coming. So really the highway track is getting more under control. The suburbs track is pretty rough, but at least they're far back. Same thing for the forest track and their strength isn't too high. And the mountain tracks actually mostly killed. If I can like maybe run El Toro in there, you can clear out that place. Maybe I can kill those guys and get the VIPs through. But in any case, I've got three actions plus my player action four. And plus Sheriff Hunt's leadership five. I could have these people shoot for free, for example. Yeah, let's uh, start with that. So for a free action, but it will take one of my three ammo, I'll have the four civilians shoot. And, oh, that's not good. Yep, that is a zero hit. <laughs> Total waste of a free action and ammo. But let's not stop there. Let's use one action, one ammo to have the Sheriff shoot. All the better, come on. Nine. I'm perfect, that is three hits. Let's see, that guy's a two, this guy's a three. Nice, that puts him to six. So if the sheriff defended with the plus two bonus, I guess that would put me to my advantage. For another action, let's have Mr. Johnson scavenge. So he's up on a regular village space. A four or five will be supplies. A six will be ammo. I'll have to get a six, all the supplies will be fine too. Or nothing, oh, yuck. Do that one more time, so I'll have one action left. Okay, there we go, I get one ammo. And for my last action, it might backfire, but I'm gonna charge in here with El Toro. So four, five, six, he'll just flip them and push them. Ah, no. So regular combat, no terrain bonuses. So he just has advantage. Seven. So one, he won't flip and two damage to them. It does bring our infection to nine. All right, so they are on their three side and down a life. And he'll clear that in a second, but oh man, we're gonna go up another infection, great. And that's the end of the turn, so the cast comes off, but that goes up. Our next event, I think we're actually getting close to the National Guard. Well, hero arrived, we got people coming out all over the place. Okay, we got one R, the VIBs can't move, and everyone else is defiant, so no movement right now. We do have to roll and we're at 10, that's not good. Six, okay. So it's down to four. Let's see where new zombies show up. Oh no, a bad card. Okay, player's choice, that's good. Crazy enough, I think I'm actually gonna go to the highway because all the other places are already kind of filled up and the mountains, the VIPs might get killed. Oh, that's right, but they'll show up on the closest chaos space. Uh, but yeah, I can't really handle any other places. Actually, wait, how about the suburbs? Because they'll get bumped back a five. Yeah, I mean, just hopefully we'll never move them up that much. But what did this say? I don't know, Farmingdale's comptroller, John Stingle, discovers resources are missing. Roll for supplies and ammo on a one to two, minus two, on a three, four, five, minus one, on a six, no effect. Oh, don't take all our food. Okay, so that's minus one and our ammo, minus one. Okay, we don't have to eat. Almost everyone moves. The only one that doesn't is the mountain. All right, so these guys come in and that's another chaos. Oh, yikes, they can't even run away. I need to get somebody in here. Now, these guys come in with six, which means the defiance is finally gone. Man, that track held on forever. All right, so Mr. Johnson uses trap. He rolls on a one, two, three. Uh, we just have to have regular hand-to-hand -hand combat and a four, five, six, they take one hit and he can withdraw. So let's try it. Nice. So we'll put a hit on the bigger zombie and move out, but the other guys still need to fight them. Raise infection up to five. That is six combined. So two times their three, which means with the one move, it's just advantage. That was a five and then a five on the floor, so 10. All right, so zombies take two, they take one and zombies retreat, good. So we'll flip this guy for the two damage. They're not quite flipped yet. That means the refugees are still defiant. And wait, did I already move this guy? I think I did. Ah, well, if I didn't, sorry. Right, and then the highway, so they'll come in and attack and then this guy will move up. Let's just move him now so we don't forget. All right, so Sheriff will defend. Uh, it's advantage, but with the two bonus goes to his advantage and he has a reroll. Whoa, you're a crazy Sheriff. So it's just huge advantage, four hits. Though we are up to six now. So let's see, four. Wiping that guy out will be best for us. So that's three plus one hit on him. Then he retreats back. Oh, I just realized I did that out of order. I forgot it wasn't my choice. 
And so I get two actions, but at the beginning of this phase, place a new random available hero in either the town center or any start space. Yes. And the random draw is the horse. What? All right. So this is an expansion character. So he's got six movement. He can carry another human and they get a free ride as part of his movement so they can move together. And he counts one person for stacking. And he here is stacked with him, gains one strength and does not increase when he engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He gets one free move action each action phase. Um, and yeah, the other things are basically about him fighting by himself. Oh man, let's get him like with uh, El Toro or Sheriff and just smash some people. So we'll definitely put him in the town center. And again, he's got a free move every turn, nice. See, I want to get El Toro in a more useful place, so let's send uh, General Lee to get him. So this will be the free movement. Boomp. <laughs> Love it. We've got three more regular actions. Let's try to get some more food with Mr. Johnson while he's on the good food place. Okay, so that's uh, one supply. Leaves us with uh, one event action and one player action. Oh, you know what? I can actually have uh, El Toro Loco search at the mine. That has a six, gives you two ammo, and four and five give you one, so it's a good place for ammo. So that'll be my second action, even though he doesn't roll double. Ooh, nice, one ammo. Speaking of ammo, I think the sheriff is gonna use his free order to have them shoot the zombies next to him. Come on, do better this time. I'm just throwing off the board for a little bit. Seven, the four gunfire, that's two hits. It'll flip them to their three side, certainly better. We still have my regular action. Hmm, I think the sheriff might wanna run over here and help there. Although wait, that's right, it would take one action just to flip the bridge. So let's have El Toro try to get some more ammo for us. Yeah, plus two. Let's show where we are. Six infections, not too terrible. And then three of each. Decent place to be. All right, new event. Ooh, haha. <laughs> okay, immediately make a fate draw and place the National Guard on the Faded Track start space. National Guard may make one move per four R space for free. Uh, they move one space per move action. Cost this unit two ammo to make a gunfire attack, and it cannot use a super weapon. We don't have that in this version. Then, oh, that's just the entire turn. We just do another card. All right, here comes the cavalry. Oh no, okay, so the National Guard's coming out on the highway, which is not necessarily the track I needed them on. Okay, place the infected vermin standing on the start space of the track where there are the most Zed units. So that's definitely gonna be the four over here on the suburbs. So this is a plague carrier, they suck. He doesn't count for stacking, so he can be with two zombies. You can kill him, but you gotta kill all the zombies that are with him first. And even when you kill him, he gets a saving throw, so he might just come back. And whenever he's not in a start space at the beginning of every turn, you increase infection by one while he's just alive. Man, I really wish the National Guard had come out there. But here they are in all their glory, 10 attack and lots of life. So I guess they'll just come down, clean out this track and take away the chaos. And then uh, we can, if we have time, get them to the other tracks. So we have nine events left, including the finale, the end, which uh, doesn't give us any actions. We just have to survive. Ooh, this is not good. Okay, you can talk this special turn only, so we're not gonna get to do anything. So those don't apply in solo. All tracks activate with each Zed unit advancing one space. However, if a Zed unit's activation results in a combat that it wins, it advances again and again and again. After activating all Zed's units, we do another event card. So this is not good. I'll start with probably my easiest fight here, which is right here. El Toro Loco is boosted to seven attack, thanks to the horse. And we don't have to increase infection, which is great. So he's already two times, and with the boost from the terrain, he'll be three times. Here we go. Eight. And yes, that guy is super dead, and we are not hurt. So the mountain is clear. Let's get him out of there. Okay, next track I'm pretty sure will win is this one. They're coming in. That will increase infection. Let's move him before we forget. And we'll have the sheriff defend with his reroll. And again, certainly three times. Seven. Um, yeah, we're fine with that. So they are just straight up dead. We're certainly gonna get more zombies from infection soon, but both these tracks are fine. We need to, uh, I guess the sheriff can leave them behind and come over here to help out. All right, four strength attacking three here and the five will move in. Pushes infection to eight. And I guess it goes from advantage to tied with the bonus. Ah, but only a six. Two hits to me, so I flip and am hurt. And only one hit to them. And they did win the fight, so the refugees get to flee, but then they'll get eaten if they get attacked again. All right, so now they're coming in here. Now, do I have Mr. Johnson fight, or do I have him run away and try to blast them? Blasting won't make the odds any better, so I think he has to fight. So there would be their advantage, but it's tied because of the terrain. Come on, Johnson. Seven. Okay, that'll be two each, so he might be dead. But uh, they'll be killed, and these guys will have to retreat, so at least the uh, bleeding stops. And we did have a chaos here. Saving there for Johnson. Oh, he is dead. 
And the graveyard's getting a little full. All right, now over here, which again should be a pretty easy one. We'll get a three times bonus for the sheriff with the terrain. No, reroll that. Please don't do it again. Seven. Okay, we do increase infection to 10, but they take three damage and they're pushed back. Okay, now if we thought the forest track was dire, this is really bad. I mean, they could just keep on going and going and get into town. Oh, no, I guess they would stop because they wouldn't have... Well, no, they might have somebody to fight, so... Oh, man. All right, so this one we will move one at a time. So we'll move them up and then they'll come and so will the rats. So clearly, no matter what, it's going to be a three times bonus for the zombies. Seven. Three damage, so they're not quite dead. I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing. Oh, wait, you know, I forgot. We get the one terrain advantage, even when they're way above us. No, but a seven is still <laughs> three damage and push back. That does push infection to 11. We might get a super zombie in a second. Okay, the defiant guys run away. Now they attack again. Let's see. I mean, either way, it'll be a three times, and yeah, there's no defense modifier here. So let's actually have the ones defend again, I guess. <laughs> That's not it. So they're definitely probably dead. Let's roll for them. And of course, they pass their check. So great. All our hospital beds are full. And these guys... Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, so with the bridge out, I just looked it up. They just literally skip over it, which I guess is good. But they do eat the refugees. Let's see if they get a saving throw. They don't. That pushes us into Super Zed territory. These guys are going to advance again, but they will stop there. There was a chaos there. There's a chaos in the bridge. We only have two of those tokens left. Uh, these zombies will move forward, and so will the rats. And I gotta draw for where the Super Zeds are going. Oh, most Zeds units. That's gonna be over here. And Lake Effect Zeds. Place a new Zeds unit on the campground space. Ugh. Now, the track jumped up before they moved in there, so the closest chaos space will be here. And we drew the lovely Doom Zeds. Huh. So uh, they have seven attack, lots of life, and you have to retreat no matter what the combat result is. So man, they are going to be tough to keep out of the town center. And I don't know if they advance this round. I don't think they do. But I do get to decrease infection. Please roll high. Ooh. All right, well, we probably won't have any more infections for quite a while. But here's the thing. That was just an event. So we might have them activate again before we can do anything. And oh, no. National Guard, why'd you go to the wrong place? Oh, another exclamation point. This is not good. Okay, so first, uh, 4R. So the National Guard can move one. Woohoo! The VIPs have a clear route through, if we can get them there. No roll for infection, fine. Got to roll for eating. And we have four people now between the refugees and the hospital. Pretty likely... No! Okay. What the heck. Oh, at the beginning of this phase, place a new Zed unit on every village space that is Zed's control. <laughs> oh, God. Remove all hit markers from Zed's. Oh, <laughs> we are dead. All right, so, yeah, they're healed. So let's see, new Zed unit here. This chaos counts, and they don't find the dog. Um, oh, crud. No. All right, so the VIPs get devoured. They do make their saving throw. I can do triage so I can throw away another one of these veterans to make room for them. That does bring that back up. Let's see, on the forest track, I get one there. And Lord help us, we get one on each of these spaces. And by the way, I should have moved infection up one for our friendly rats there. So now we have to activate everywhere. Oh my gosh. Well, let's go and do the most important one. So they'll move there, they'll move there, they'll move there, they'll move there, and the rats will move there. So we don't lose if these guys defeat us, but uh, we got to stop them from getting to the town center. So we get a two bonus terrain advantage, so even though they are... Actually, wait. 14? Yeah, yeah, no, they're definitely three above us. So that means now they're just uh, advantage. Nine. These guys are rolling well. Okay, two and two, and they retreat. Nice. Clearly, it's going on the nine guys. And we'll flip. All right, for other tracks, uh, these guys are going to move out. Let's see if Pickles can finally do his job. Yay! So they stay put for the National Guard to come try to kill him. And these guys attack the Sheriff. And we are three times. Six, let's re-roll. Come on. There we go. So it is an infection, but they are definitely dead. All right, so this track is safe. We just got to get everyone over there. Well, although this one isn't much better, is it? Okay, so that's eight. Move these guys up. That is definitely three times, but they get advantage, so it's only two times. Seven. Okay, so that is three hits, so they are dead. Saving throw. We can't fit you. Okay, we'll get rid of this other civilian. 
And that increases infection again. <laughs> Eat these guys. Okay, they do not make their saving third, and that increases infection two more. We're up to nine again. And you know, I don't think I did it for the VIPs. I think we're up to 10. That's another chaos. We only have one left. Meanwhile, over here, so we're fighting El Toro, who's at uh, two times with the terrain. No, six, that's not great. Okay, one hit to him, so he does flip. Two hits to them, they run back, and remember, he doesn't increase infection while he's on the horse. All right, so we survived for now. We got a uh, one event action, plus the free movement from General Lee, uh, Sheriff Hunt ordering some civilians, all that fun stuff. All right, so the forest track is a mess, but clearly this is the uh, main hotspot right now. So let's uh, move the sheriff in for one action. I think we need use my free action to move them out. For my player action, we'll use one of our three ammo to shoot these guys and hopefully at least flip that giant one. Seven with five attack is two hits. So that will flip them. We can put one more on them. Oh crap, I forgot. I could use an action to heal them and bring my infection all the way down. Darn it. All right, free movement for El Toro. I guess he'll go one, two, three, four, five. I mean, he can come in there, right? Is that gonna help anymore? Not necessarily. Actually, you know, he could charge these guys, push them back, maybe do the free damage and clear some chaos. Yeah, sure, let's try it. Come on, El Toro, charge. No. Uh-oh, oh, wait, so he's got five attacks. Oh, they're just tied. Oh no, General Lee, what have we done? Ha <laughs> we've done something awesome. What, with an 11 I still take a damage? All right, so he has to do a saving throw, but these guys take three, so they are flipped and run away. Okay, he makes a saving throw, but that pushes us to 11. Infection. Oh, I guess another refugee will go out. Oh, and I guess the General Lee might have to fight. Although he can choose to retreat for free if he gets attacked. Yeah, everything is a mess. I don't see us surviving very long. Okay, in the dead of night, we get a refugee move. Um, are there any? No, they're all dead. But the National Guard gets to come in and attack. That, of course, increases our infection. So they are just at advantage. Wow, those are strong zombies. Boom! So that flips these guys. And we take no damage. And I guess they go back like that. Oh, but then we are going to spawn zombies for sure. We're at 12, so at least it's not a super zombie. Just six, so down to six. Draw a fate card. Torrential downpour, least chaos, hmm. So yeah, least chaos is on the mountain track, which means this guy pops up and the general will run away. Okay, and then no further movement is allowed on the mountain track for the rest of this turn. Immediately roll for each Z unit on the mountain track. Uh, one or two, it swept one space closer. Uh, three or four, no effect. Five or six, it swept one away. Okay, so the closest one goes away one, and the other one stays. Right, then we got a roll to eat. We got four again. And the highway and forests will resolve. Thank God it's not the suburbs. And we got a ton of actions though. Wait, at the beginning of this phase. Plus one infection per Z unit on the highway. We found only one, but we get another one from the rats. Did I do that last turn? I'm not sure. Place a new Z on the highway and no terrain shift this turn. Well, it could be a lot worse. So highways first, they're gonna attack the National Guard. No terrain shift, so it's just double six. So they actually take a hit. These guys take two and retreat. And then the forest, they're just basically free to do whatever they want. Now I've got four actions. Let's see, for one, let's heal the VIPs. Now, you know, actually, I guess they never went to town center. They just went straight to the refugee camp. I don't know. I'm still going to count it and do that. <laughs> let's have a sheriff shoot in here and increase our odds a little bit. Seven. That's two damage, so we do finish off that guy like that. Let's move General Lee, one, two, three, four, five, six, and get the Sheriff on him. That's free. And let's see, I guess I can order him with leadership to forage. It's one food. Right, so I have three actions left. I guess for one, I can move them to a better spot. It might be a little crazy, but for two, I think I'm gonna move the dog. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three. Let's see if we can hold up this track some. That would be huge. Okay, he's not found out. That's a good start. Right, next event, not too many left. Shh, I know they're out there. Okay, one free move. But again, we have no refugees. Oh, I forgot. They would have taken away this chaos. They would have raised infection by one, but still, that's good for the moment. And I guess they'll be able to get another one. No infection, roll to eat. I'm still at four, so yes, we have to eat one. Okay, so this is a good one. Start spaces only means if there's a zombie on the start space, they move, but if there's not, we don't uh, move them at all. Oh, and that's right, one from the rats. 
So yeah, nobody moves though. We don't have anybody on start spaces. Yes. We got three actions, but we can't attack this phase. I guess we don't know where the zombies are. Okay, so I guess a lot of foraging and movement. Let's see, I think I'll spend one to get them in there, get rid of some chaos and get closer to helping us. And two, three, I can heal both of these guys, get the EKGs off. That'll move our infection down to zero. I'll order them to search. Five, that's a food, okay. And for my blast player action, I guess I'll search him in town again. Six in ammo, yes. Okay, five events left. Uh, but we're on four now. Okay, two free moves, but again, that's just the National Guard. They did get rid of that. I gotta remember that. So we have three casts left, and we're up to one infection. We roll for infection. We don't need to. Roll for food. Nope. Okay, almost every bad Zed activates. So suburbs, then mountains, then highway. The suburbs is clearly the bad one. Oh, don't forget my rats. Okay, so you guys are gonna attack. So with the horse, I'm up to six. So I go from advantage, then two uh, terrain makes me three times. Seven is good enough. That'll do three damage to them and none to me. Uh, did I increase that? No, I didn't. So they flip and run back. And then now these guys move up, but they always want the bigger one. Oh, that's right. We can't even retreat from him. I just have to shoot and shoot and shoot that guy. Uh, only that guy can fit. And only that guy can fit. And there they go. Okay, mountains, much less worrisome. And highways bring in chaos back. But I mean, we've got two of them for now. I think we're okay. Okay, we've got two actions. Choose one. Two free heal actions at the hospital. Oh, but we don't decrease infection. Minus two infection. Minus one infection and one free heal action at the hospital. I guess I prefer the two free heals and get these guys almost back in business. I oh, mean, I wish I had more ammo. I gotta shoot these guys because I just have to retreat and they'll just come right into the town. Well, I guess city planners strike back. I could just kill them when they get into the town, worst case. All right, so first action. Come on, sheriff. What? That's nothing. Okay, second action. Wonderful. Ooh, that's much better. Okay, so that was three. They're five side. Oh, I'll take it. And then I got one more action. I guess we'll search in the town. Oh, wait, I can have the uh, civilian search for free first. Food, okay. And let's search again with our last action. Try to get some ammo. All right. No. Oh, God. Okay, this might be the end. Right, so infection goes up by two, which is at five, but it's going to be a lot more. All tracks advance, and then remember that if they win, they keep on advancing, and then we just do another card. All right, so these guys will do. These guys get into the mine. Oh, man, we're about to lose our last chaos. These guys try to advance. Please fail. Yes, finally. Bark, bark, bark. Stay where you are, which means he can't move. Boom. But clearly that's not the one we're worried about. All right, so they're going to have to retreat. Okay, hmm. So if I can't kill one of them, they'll go into the town center. The spikes can only kill one, and then they'll we'll lose. Darn. Okay, so what do we got here? They've got seven. I've got six with the horse. So they've got advantage, but plus two. I've got advantage. I got a reroll. I got a chance. That's not it. Come on, reroll. Come on, reroll. Oh, no. Because okay, so human advantage. Two hits. But then uh, they would retreat, but I'll retreat instead. So I can try to cancel those for every four, five, or six. I cancel a hit, so I don't get hurt at all. But we do have to run back. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I think they're mobs, so Brains makes them advance again. We can city plan to kill off the one guy, but their friends get in. So that is all she wrote. Uh, the town center has fallen. Gosh, what terrible stuff do we have left? <laughs> we had another excavation point attack next. And then a positive one. And then, yeah, we wouldn't have survived that, I don't think. All right, so that is Dawn of Zed's third edition. Not the most complicated mode, but you can play easier. You would take out the uh, refugees. You can even go all the way to the basic mode and take out the super zombies. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.